My name is Anthony. I work as a developer advocate on Amadeus for Developers. And in today's video, I would like to show you how to combine our hotel APIs to build your hotel booking engine. To build your own booking engine, you need to combine four different endpoints. And the first step, obviously, is to start by the hotel search API. Hotel search API is composed of three different endpoints. And we're going to go through each of them to show you the complete flow until the end of the booking when you combine it with the Hotel Booking API. As first, you want to find the list of hotels available in a specific city, on a specific area. That's what the find hotel endpoint is for, so the first endpoint. You give a city code or you give uh, an area and you can search for all hotel available in that specific area. Of course, this API comes with a lot of parameters and filtering, allowing you to find, allowing you to find hotel for specific dates or specific hotel chains. When you find the list of hotels, uh, I'm going to show you the, the response right after, you get the list of all hotels available, and for each hotel, you get the cheapest room available in that hotel. The next step, when you have selected the hotel you're interested in, you want to get the list of all the rooms, all the offers available in that specific hotel. This is the purpose of the second endpoint, the view hotel rooms. So you give a, uh, you give a hotel ID, so a specific hotel, and the API will return to you the list of all the offers for that specific hotel. What we call an offer is basically a room mixed with a package. So first it's going to return to you all the different rooms. You have rooms for two persons, four persons, six persons, you have some uh, deluxe rooms uh, and so on. But then for the same room you can have different packages. You can have uh, cancellation included or not, free cancellation included or not, you can have a breakfast included or not, and so on and so on. So the purpose of that, of that endpoint is for a specific hotel to give you all the different offers available for that hotel. For that hotel. And the next step is the price and availability check. When you're going to build your solution, when you're going to, you're going to build your hotel booking engine, your users, they're going to start looking for different hotels. Then they're going to look for all the rooms and the offers available for that hotel. The time between the moment you display in your solution, your website or your mobile app, the list of the offers and the moment they decide to book, things can have happened on the market. The price can have changed. The availability may be the room is not available anymore. So before moving to the booking, you need to check that the room, the price you display to your user is still the right one and the room is still available. That's the purpose of the price and availability uh, API. This one takes the offer ID that you will get from the second endpoint. So when you have the list of all the offers, you're going to select the one you're interested uh, about, the one you want to book. You're going to pass that to the price and availability API, and the price and availability API will tell you if the price changed and what is the new, what are the new condition if it's still available and so on. And then you're ready to go to the booking. You're ready to move to the booking API. Until now, the two APIs were the three APIs were gets. This one is a post. You're going to pass the hotel the offer ID, so the room you want to book, some personal information, the, the name of the travelers that are going to actually go to the hotel during the booking, and the payment information. And that's all. You are ready to do the booking. Okay, let's leave PowerPoint for a moment and let's look at really how to use the API. For this, I'm going to use Postman. I don't know if you know Postman. Postman is a, a very simple and powerful tool allowing you to play with uh, REST and JSON API very easily. For Amadeus for Developers, we, we published a collection where by just downloading the collection in one click, you can add all the different APIs we have and be able to use them directly from the tool. It's very efficient uh, and very quick. We actually offer the same functionalities on our portal, but for the purpose of the demo, I think it's more clear to see directly on, the, on Postman. So let's start combining the different APIs. So here you can see in the hotel category, we have the search and shopping, and we have the three different searches. So the one we saw uh, before in the slide and the booking. Let's start by the first one. The first one, the very simple version, uh, takes a couple of parameters uh, and the first one is the city code. So in which city do we want to look for hotels? In this example we are looking for hotels in London. Then different dates. For the purpose of the example I'm looking for a hotel from the 1st of April to the 1st of April. 3rd of April, so two days. And I use the API. 
So here I'm calling the first one. I want to get the list of all the hotels available in London for those dates. Okay, here we are. So we got a reply. Let's take a look at what it says. So first we can see that the data is composed of different hotel offers. So basically uh, different hotels uh, available. We're gonna take a look at the first one and, and look at how it's composed. So we can see we have in one hotel offer, we have a hotel part and an offers part. The hotel part is actually all the information about this specific hotel we find, and we have a list of them, right? So the first one is the London uh, Leicester Square. You have here the exact location of the hotel, you have the rating of the hotel, you have the address, and all the, basically all the information uh, of the hotel, even the description and the amenities. So what is available in that hotel? Uh, thank God it has Wi-Fi, uh, elevator, and so on and so on. It can have a pool, it can have a lot of different amenities. Some hotel providers actually even publish uh, some images or photo of the hotel. So this is the hotel part. Uh, up next, uh, then it's available, of course. And the second part is the offers part. The offers are actually the list of rooms available. In the first endpoint, what we do, we return to you the cheapest room of this hotel. So you can get an idea of the cheapest price for this specific hotel. So if you build a website, for example, you'll be able to display the list of all the hotels. And for each hotel, you'll be able to display the price of the cheapest room. Okay, and then you have many, many different hotels, right? If you continue, this one is another one, and so on and so on. So let's take the first one. And let's say that now we are interested in that hotel and we want to get the list of all the offers for that specific hotel. This is the moment we move to the second uh, endpoint. The second endpoint takes into parameter the hotel ID. And what I'm going to add here are the check-in and check-out date. So we get actually real price and availability. Uh, I'm going to put the same one we had before. So from the 1st to the 3rd of April. And I request the API. Here, now, so if we look at the response, we have again the hotel part, which we keep returning. Uh, actually, we built uh, an object, a model named hotel offer, which is composed of the combination of hotel and offers. We keep returning this object all the time. So if you build in your code a model, you're always able to reuse it very easily. So we keep returning to you the information of the hotel, so you can still display them if you want to. And the part that changed a lot is the offers, where before we're returning only the cheapest one, here we're gonna return the complete list of all the offers available in that hotel. So some information here, uh, you can see that it includes breakfast. So this room specific offer includes a breakfast, it's a superior room with a king bed uh, size. You have a description of the room. It tells you for how many people that room is available. It, told you, it tells you the price for the two-day stay. So here, uh, 381 pounds. So more information about the details, what's included or not, how the price is split, uh, how much you pay in taxes compared to the total price. Here, you have the detail of how much you pay per night. You know that very often each night can be different if you're staying on a Wednesday, a Thursday, if there's an event in the city on the weekends and so on. Prices uh, are different depending on the day. So here you have for those, the two days, the price difference, which is actually quite uh, quite big. And the next part is very, very interesting for the, for the booking part. It's actually the payment method accepted by the hotel. The first thing you're gonna see is the policy. Uh, you have different policies when, when, when you book a hotel, when you pay. The first one is the guarantee. So you pass a payment method. The hotel is going to save that payment method, but it's not going to make any payment on that uh, payment method. It's not going to retrieve anything. Uh, so here, basically, they're going to save your credit card information. They will not take any money on your credit card or, or your traveler credit card. But if, for example, the cancellation is not free, and the traveler is not showing up at the hotel, they will be able to take the money of the night. This is the guarantee. Another one heavily used is the deposit. Deposit is they take the payment method and they take part of the payment at the booking time or after a period of time. So for example, they take a deposit of 10% of the total price. So you will have this information uh, as part of the policy. 
The next part is the accepted payments. So it's basically what are the payment methods accepted by the hotel. So here we can see this hotel accept credit cards uh, payment. Here, uh, here actually the method is credit card. And here you have the list of cards accepted by the hotel. Here we tell you again what's the payment type uh, and the cancellation. So until when you can cancel. And then you have another room. Uh, this is a room only. This is one. This is a standard room, and if you keep going, you're gonna find uh, other rooms. In this example, uh, in the test environment, it seems for this specific hotel in April, beginning of April, we have only two different offers. Okay, so that's how you you get the information about the different offers. Now let's say that um, my traveler in my solution they want to move on uh, on the floor and they want to, to to go to the booking. Before doing the booking, I will need to confirm. So if I show you again the slide here, we have done the first one, the find hotel based on the city code, so in London. Then we have listed all the rooms available using the hotel ID. Now we need to pass the offer ID to confirm the price and the availability of the room. We want to make sure that the price didn't change and the room is still available before going to the booking. So I'm taking the ID, the offer ID of the room I'm interested uh, to book here, and I'm moving on to the next endpoint. Here, very easy. You just have to give the offer ID here and to submit the API. Here, as you can see, nothing changed. Uh, I don't have any warning, I don't have any error, so it means the price and availability is still good. Uh, you actually get even a bit more information in that, re in that response uh, for the offer. Uh, we still return everything that we had before. You even have here the information about the time of the check-in and the check-out uh, and the cancellation here. You can even have more the description you can include, for example, in your booking confirmation when you send it to your customer. But okay, I've priced it, it's still available, the price is still the same, which in this example it's quite normal because I did it a couple of seconds before. When you have users browsing your website, looking for the best hotel offers and so on, it's going to take time for them. So most probably the price might have changed. So what you need to do in that case is to inform your users that the price has changed and they are still interested to, to move on with the booking. Okay, but let's say now I want to book that hotel. So here again, I'm taking the offer ID and I will need it in the hotel booking. So here we are moving from before we're using a get method because we're basically retrieving information to a path method because we are going to create a booking. So the path method takes a body. The body we need to build has three main parts and one optional part. The first part is to give which offer, which room we want to book. So here the offer ID. The second part is the information about who is booking the room. So the guest information. Here for this example, we created a fake user, uh, which is Bob Smith with fake information. And he is the traveler who is booking that room. So very, very simple title, first name, last name, and some contact information. And the next part is the payment. So we saw that this hotel is accepting credit card uh, payment, right? So we need to pass this credit card information to the hotel. Here we, we say that we are booking, so ID one, because we actually have only one offer ID. We, we could have many more if we are booking different rooms. Uh, payment method credit card, yes. And we pass the card information. So in this example, obviously it's fake. It's a visa, uh, visa card with the card number and the expiration date. In this specific context, what I'm use does, we do not process any payment. We actually do not even check the, the, if the credit card is valid or not in that specific context. The contract we have is we pass the information securely to the hotels. The hotels are saving the payment information and saving it in their reservation system. They are the one handling all the reservation and payment. If they have a guarantee, if they have a free cancellation, if they have a deposit, they will be the ones handling all that part. As of today, our hotel booking API is the first version. We actually released it a couple of days ago, only support credit card payments uh, uh, as the first version. So on your side, it means that you will have to implement in your own solution uh, a way for, for the users to pass their credit card information. Keep in mind that most of the hotels, part of our, our, our distribution, so 
the content we have in this API, you actually post paid. It's the, most of them are going to pay directly at the hotel. So your role is here is to make sure that you pass the right information to the hotel so the reservation is done, uh, is well done. And the last part, which is the optional part, is the rooms. It's basically if you want to pass some specific comments uh, at the booking time, like, okay, I'm going to arrive late, or maybe I'm the honeymoon uh, trip with my, uh, with my husband or my wife, and I would like to get uh, a bottle of wine or something like that. You know, when you book a hotel, you can pass a specific information if you want. But this is optional. And that's all. And here we have booked the room. This has been booked in the... In, this is obviously the test environment. We haven't booked a real hotel here, but this is exactly the same process. We're actually simulating a real production environment in our test. So we have booked a hotel. Here you have your booking confirmation. This is an ID that you can use, which combines the booking confirmation and the ID of the hotel here in which you booked your hotel chain. And this is something which is not useful as of today that will be later when we're going to start publishing new APIs. It's actually linked to the PNR information, the personal name record. So if, for example, you build a solution in the future and you're offering flight bookings and hotel bookings, you will be able to create a single package, a PNR, when you put all your bookings and to manage them at that level. Uh, we're preparing it, we're preparing for it, but it's not available yet. This number is quite important. If you decide to call the hotel or to do some offline processes, that might be the number they're going to ask you to find your booking. So this is as well the important number that you need to communicate to your customers, to your travelers when they finish their booking. And, he, and that's all. You have done the complete hotel booking flow from the search to the book. Uh, keep in mind that this is uh, a first version, we just released it. Um, we do not offer, as of today, uh, other services such as the cancellation uh, and so on, that will come later. So all of that will have to be managed offline if you start doing uh, booking production offline, but I mean using other uh, management tools or directly calling the hotel. But we're working on it to offer more uh, services on the hotel uh, booking area. And and yeah, that's everything I wanted to show you. Obviously, for all the APIs I showed you, I took the very simple use cases where I didn't use a lot of filtering. But if you go to our portal uh, on Amadeus for Developers and you get access to our API reference, so this is, for example, for the hotel search, for each API, you get access to examples of API uh, queries, requests, and responses. So you can really understand how the model works. And you can see here at that part all the different uh, available parameters allowing you to filter your request. In my case, I use only the city code and the check-in and check-out dates, but you have many, many more when you can find specific radius in specific areas, you can look for any specific chains, and you can play if you're looking for specific amenities, ratings, and so on and so on. So you have the full documentation here. And exactly the same for the for booking API. So thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact us at developers uh, at amazus.com. We're always uh, very happy to help and good luck using our APIs. Bye-bye.